So we're down to our last presenter. J.D. Birchmeyer, and the title of his pr presentation is Water is a Little Short This Year. J.D. Birchmeyer, who everyone calls Birch, except his family, used to be a science teacher in a previous incarnation. Then he retired and started doing the things that he always wanted to do. After spending a stint as the president of the Colorado Wyoming Association of Physics Teachers. One of those things was taking the master gardening class and learning to cope with a climate that is more challenging than simply dropping seeds in the ground and waiting. In the time not spent tending to the green stuff, he does some birding and writes the newsletters for the Longmont Astronomy Club. In the winter, a few nesting boxes come out of the workshop in the basement. About 500 so far. Here's J.D. Birchmeyer. Okay, thank you. Now, gardening's always been a passion because you like your own food, you know it's organic and you can trust the stuff. And it's a lot easier and tastier. But in Colorado, it's a little bit different. Uh, some years you have adequate water and some years you have less. You never have too much. The first pioneers, uh, they came out here, figured they'd had plenty of water, and then we had that dust bowl thingy. And So if you look around Colorado, there's a few uh, old houses that look a little bit like this, where people packed up and moved to greener pastures like California. You've all read Steinbeck. So the local plants, uh, they store water for use during the summer when they need it. And then since they're the only source around, they protect it with various barriers like these thorns. This is kind of rough in a gardener, but it <laughs> saves the water from the cattle eating it and things like that. Or you get a yucca like this that has a tap root that goes down 15 or 20 feet. Very sharp leaves on the side that cut your hands. And then it wastes all that water by putting out nectar to attract the pollinators for when it flowers in the spring. The, uh, these are bulbs, various bulbs. This is uh, Persian pearl. Tulips evolved in Asia Minor and Central Asia. So they're not from Holland. They're designed for places like Colorado. These do very well here. If you read the descriptions, this is Tulip Atarda, they always design for rock gardens. That means you grow them in gravel and among the rocks. They do really good when it gets tough in the summer. They die and go dormant. They wait till next year. So they've evolved basically just like us. Here's my favorite. This is uh, Tulipa Prestens. Uh, this is the variegated version with the uh, green and white leaves. It's available in a plain green. This looks uh, really good when it's mixed with Scylla or something like grape hyacinths. I've got a couple hundred of these going. They look really nice. Uh, now we're off to the garlic and onion family. This is the globe allium. It's in the garlic family. You can buy the 10 inch model for 15 bucks. This is the four inch model for about three bucks. But after three years, you can see you get quite a few globes. And then if you want to push the envelope, this is my front yard, you're looking at 900 species crocuses in a space that's 15 by 15. This was two weeks ago. They're gone now. They go dormant during the summer too. They don't like irrigation, so in a couple years uh, they kind of fade out. Uh, these are tough little buggers. So the crocus is on the left, the tulips are on the right. Uh, very varied weather here in Colorado once in a while, but they're okay, <laughs> trust me. They were in the mountains when they started out. Now off to perennials. This is Dianthus, the fire witch series, about six inches high. It blooms like this about the first of June. This baby is located in the rocks between the sidewalk and the street. I water it a couple times a year. And this is what it looks like. This is another one, Nephophia, red hot poker. 
Uh, this is about 30 inches high, has varied color uh, as the flowers age. This is a one shot. The little guy in the middle is a continuous bloomer. Uh, I think that's a yellow one. Last year it just kind of sat there and didn't bloom. This is in the Unitheris. Uh, this is the evening primrose. Blooms open at dusk, close about 10 o'clock in the morning. They last one day. You can see dead ones hanging all over. This thing is a leggy, lanky mess, but the hummingbird moths just love it. They come in every night. Uh, every Coloradan, this is the go-to plant for growing where it'll take anything. You grow it beside the road where it gets chemicals on it and everything. You can grow it in dust, I think. You don't have to water it at all. Uh, you know the leaves smell. That's a chemical that repels the bugs. Now, this is Helianthus, one of the fake sunflowers in a daisy sort of family. Uh, this one's pretty tough. It grows in the middle of the garden. All the other plants lean on it because it has really stiff sort of stalks. And then the next one shows the other one, Heliopsis, in the back. Different leaf, looks exactly the same. And then you have the wild sunflower in the front, the ones that grow along the roads in Colorado. They don't need anything. I mean, you can't kill them, for crying out loud. <laughs> I let half a dozen of them come up in my garden to keep the lettuce in the shade so it lasts longer. These are uh, two native plants of the southwest, penstemon on the left and hyssop or agastache on the right. Uh, the one on the left is a hummingbird magnet, the real hummingbirds, not the fake moss. The one on the right, uh, Ditto, it smells kind of licoricely, and it dies in my garden all the time. This is another primrose, the pink one here, light pink. Now, this is a showy primrose, it's nearly invasive. The dark purple one is a prairie mallow called wine cups, and that's a viney sort of thing. I bought that after I saw it going across somebody's driveway in the sun. <laughs> this is a uh, uh, the daisy, painted daisy, pyrethrum. This is the source, uh, the chemical in this one to protect its water is pyrethrin, which is used in all the environmentally friendly sprays. And then one annual in a whole batch here. Uh, this is a moss rose, portulaca. And uh, this one you water whenever you remember. This is stuck in a box in the south end of my garden shed. And, Whatever he gets is what he gets. <laughs> Always really showy. They store water in the leaves. And then this is another go-to plant here. This is Gallardia. Now, this is a native. Uh, you want to buy the ones that are 30 inches high. This thing's been bred into 100 species. And all the ones that look a lot better die out after about two, three years. This thing will keep going. And then thanking these guys. I'd like to thank everybody for coming to tonight, and we'll see you at the next one in three months.